Welcome, welcome. My name is Robin Pollock. I am here from Four Homeopathy Canada. I am so thrilled to have you here. We have just launched our website. We barely launched our organization and now we're already starting our educational series that shows to you our dedication to getting you informed about homeopathy. So as many of you know, you've come to come to our website for homeopathycanada.org. We're an organization dedicated to helping people learn about homeopathy how to use homeopathy at home, and to provide educational opportunities uh, from webinars like this and study groups so that you can learn more about it and use homeopathy at home for yourself, for your children, in first aid and acute situations. And then when to know when to refer to a homeopath for something more chronic and when to go to your MD as well, because we love to work together as a unit. So a little bit about 4-H Canada, as I said, we're trying to teach you about homeopathy through education. We are a completely positive outlook organization, so there won't be any politics. We just want to teach you. We want to show you the viability of homeopathy. It's the little engine that could. It's been around for over 200 years, and it has survived. So that tells you what that homeopathy works, that it's a very safe, gentle and efficacious form of medicine and we're so delighted that you have decided to use it for yourself and for your family and to advocate for your own health care. We want people to share their success story so a big part of our campaign is that homeopathy worked for me. We are wanting to solicit your testimonials so we'll show you how to do that if you've got a story about how you tried homeopathy and couldn't believe how it worked, or I tried homeopathy because I know it works, we want to hear everything and anything from you. Homeopathy is a very safe and effective form of medicine. It's used by millions of people around the world, and there is tons and tons and tons of evidence that it works. There's gold standard research out there that you can read at any time. If you go to our website and to our Facebook page, you'll see that every single day it's populated by all sorts of evidence from around the world about homeopathy works. And sometimes we'll have things like how to deal with allergies during the summer, lots of tidbits. So please come and visit us on Facebook as well. At the end of this webinar, there will be an evaluation where you can give your feedback about this course, tell us about other courses that you would like to see, and um, sign up uh, for the uh, for the 4 H Canada and for uh, study groups because we want to come to your area. We will send a homeopath out to your area, and we will do a live demonstration and a discussion with you. Um, and you can also go to the testimonial section as well, and we'll show you how to uh, do some uh, videos for that. So let's get on to our webinar for today. We are so delighted to launch our webinar series, and we couldn't do better than with Dr. Alyssa Song, uh, who is a pediatrician at Whole Child Wellness. Uh, she's a holistic mama doc. Uh, she's a pediatrician, holistic pediatrician, pediatric functional medicine expert, and mama to two crazy fun kids. In her practice, Whole Family Wellness, she's helped thousands of kids get to their par uh, to the root causes of their health concerns and help their parents understand how to help their children thrive, body, mind, and spirit, by integrating conventional pediatrics with functional medicine, homeopathy, acupuncture, herbal medicine, and essential oils. These health concerns have ranged from frequent colds, ear infections, asthma and eczema, to autism, ADHD, anxiety, depression, and autoimmune immune illnesses. Dr. Song has created Healthy, Happy, like healthy Kids, Happy Kids to share her advice and adventures as a holistic pediatrician and mama. Now everyone can have their very own holistic pediatrician. You can follow her blog at healthykidshappykids.com. So I'm gonna start the webinar with Dr. Song this minute. And as you can see, there's a Q&A box for you to type in your questions. We wanna hear from you at the end of the webinar. Dr. Song will very generously answer some of your questions and then we can follow, continue the discussion at another time. So I'm going to stop with my screen. I'm gonna share it now with Dr. Song. Great, thank you, Robin. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm so excited to be here and really, really excited to help support for Homeopathy Canada and really support education and awareness and information to all the moms and the dads and the practitioners and grandparents who are here today. I see a lot of familiar names and I just sent out a chat. I thought it was to Kathy, but to all of you guys, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because I have a lot of slides and I have some resources for you. So I don't want you to feel like you have to frantically take notes, but I do want want you to walk away today with feeling comfortable and confident that homeopathy works and also have some tools for what, um, what homeopathic medicines you might choose for some of your most common childhood conditions. So I'm going to keep track of the time and Robin, if I uh, am starting to run a little over, just let me know so that I will speed it up. Okay, so let me share my screen with you if I can find it right there. We did practice this before. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to go to my slideshow so that everyone can see. All right, if you guys can see this, definitely let me know. Um, and Robin, you will tell me if there's a problem too. <laughs> All right, so I am going to talk with you about my top holistic pediatrician approved homeopathic medicines for your child. Um, and again, I'm here on behalf of um, For Homeopathy Canada. So grateful to be um, part of the launch of the, this amazing organization and this webinar series. And I'm looking forward to all the teaching that is to come. Um, so super excited for that. Um, let's see if I can move my slides forward. All right, so Robin gave you an introduction to who I am. And these two are who, really, who I'm the most proud of. I'm the most proud of being a mama to these kids. And, you know, they teach me every day. And knock on wood, fortunately, they are super healthy. Um, and I have not had to use very many homeopathic medicines for when they're sick, but when they are sick, homeopathic medicines are truly my first go-to. Um, and I'm going to show you exactly what I do for the kids in my practice and for my very own kids. All right, this is just more of who I am. You can uh, <laughs> read my bio if you'd like later, but um, just so you know, I am a board certified pediatrician um, and I really practice what I would call integrative pediatrics, where I integrate conventional medicine with a lot of different modalities and homeopathy is one of my mainstays uh, and definitely one of my go-tos for babies and for children because it's so safe and so effective yet so gentle. Um, and so I'm gonna show you exactly what I do in my practice. These are different ways to find me. I'd say the easiest way to get information from me because my practice has been so full and there's only so much I can teach in the office. So I started my online website, Holistic Pediatric Resource, called Healthy Kids, Happy Kids. And that's just healthykidshappykids.com. I just wanted to make sure that, that everyone knows that this presentation is for informational purposes only. Uh, I, I am trying to educate you and inform you so that you can make the best decisions for your child. But as always, just make sure that you check in with your practitioner before you make any decisions for your child. All right, so we're going to cover homeopathy 101, what homeopathy is, how you use it. I'm going to show you that there really is evidence to homeopathy, that it is an evidence-based medicine. And then we're going to go over some of the most common conditions and some of the top homeopathic medicines that I'll use for those conditions. You know, when we start thinking about why we would even use natural medicines, and I know you're all here because you're interested in natural medicines, and many of you are using homeopathic medicines or herbal medicines or essential oils already, you know, at home really successfully and just want to know more about how to incorporate it even further. And I love natural medicines because they don't artificially suppress symptoms like a fever. And we're going to see why suppressing symptoms like a fever artificially is not helping your child when they're sick. Natural medicines do help your child's immune system fight whatever is going on more effectively and efficiently. And they do help your child feel better and provide symptom relief while at the same time strengthening your child's immune system for the next time they might get sick. Because of course, there always is a next time. <laughs> you know, your kids, you know, if we know anything, it's that our kids will at some point um, get another illness. 
And with natural medicines, it really is possible to feel calm and confident when our kids are sick, especially in the middle of the night when, of course, that's when kids tend to get their fevers or tend to get that croupy cough. So we want to know, you know, how to feel confident as mamas, as papas, to help our kids when they're sick and not just wait and see. Because really in conventional pediatrics, before I became an integrative holistic pediatrician, what do we do when your child has a cold? Well, we kind of wait and watch. And Benadryl is not recommended nor helpful. Um, Sudafed is not recommended. And so while we're sitting and waiting and watching from a conventional pediatric standpoint, I might have told you, well, let's just wait and see, you know, lots of fluids, get plenty of rest. And then if they still have symptoms in a couple of weeks, come back because at that point they might have a sinus infection that might need antibiotics, right? And so, you know, really when we can use our natural medicines toolkit and uh, which is so, so amenable to, um, you know, really home care and home first aid, we can help our kids feel better now and prevent a lot of complications for when they're sick. I use a you know, variety of natural medicines in my toolkit, and what we're going to focus on today is homeopathic medicines, because we are with For Homeopathy Canada. <laughs> um, but I do incorporate, of course, diet and lifestyle and herbal medicines, acupressure points, and essential oils. This is just the way that I practice, uh, but certainly you will have many, many successes with simply using homeopathic medicines as well. Oops. Um, when we think about homeopathy and really go into you know homeopathy 101, the first thing that I really do want to clarify for families and for people listening is that homeopathy does not is not an umbrella term for all natural medicines. There is some confusion. I've had had parents come in and call anything that's natural homeopathic, like herbal medicines. Um, or dietary supplements. And so homeopathic medicines and homeopathy is really its own system of medicine. And I'm going to explain to you what that is. But homeopathic medicines are truly one of my first choices for babies and even pregnant and nursing women, because as you'll see, they're so safe and gentle, yet really effective. Um, I, you know, I have two articles, homeopathy part one and homeopathy part two on my blog, uh, which really go much deeper in than we can go into in this hour that we have together. So I just want to write those resources for you so you have them if you want to do a little bit more of a deeper dive as well. So the principle, the fundamental principle behind homeopathy is the idea that like cures like. You're taking a substance that would cause similar symptoms to what you would want to treat when homeopathically diluted. So let me give you an example. Let's take an example of an onion. We've all had the experience of cutting into a particularly pungent onion, and what happens? Your eyes water, you start to sneeze, your nose gets really runny, you might have a scratchy, itchy throat. Well, those could be the very same symptoms that you might feel at the beginning of a cold or at the beginning of an allergy attack. And so then we can actually use homeopathically diluted and prepared onion or what is called allium sepa to treat those symptoms of the beginning of an allergy or the beginning of a cold if they match those symptoms. So homeopathy really and truly does treat the unique individual. What we want to know is how each individual is experiencing their illness. There's not a one-size-fits-all approach. It's not that everyone with a cold gets allium sepa because you in the family you know, may have a cold that's run through everyone and you may have a really watery, burning nose, itchy throat, whereas your daughter who got the same cold, in fact brought it home to you from school, has a really creamy nasal discharge, maybe white, a little yellow, and they're really clingy and weepy and they want you to hold them all the time. Whereas your son doesn't have any runny nose, but just is super congested and has a fever and is really, really irritable. So it's the same cold virus, but everyone manifests it differently. And with homeopathy, we have that possibility to actually treat all of those individual symptoms and that cold, how, how each person is, is experiencing them, and really helping to stimulate um, our own sort of what we call that innate healing capacity, stimulate our own immune response to get better faster and more efficiently and feel better, but without suppressing symptoms. So homeopathy really does help our body and our immune system do its job better. 
this is another example of like cures like. You know, I, I this morning before I got to the office and got ready for this webinar, you know, had maybe a cup of coffee, maybe two. But sometimes when you've had a little too much coffee, what do you feel? You might feel a little agitated, a little overstimulated, really excitable, your heart's racing, you have trouble sleeping, you might even feel a little anxious. So when coffee or cafe accruda is homeopathically diluted, it can actually help to manage those very same symptoms with that hyperactive mind racing, you know, when you're trying to go to sleep and your mind is racing, 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 and you have those lists to do, or let's say you've kind of, you know, popped the news a little too early that you were going to take your kids to Disneyland over the summer, and for weeks before you go, their mind is racing and they're excited and they can't go to sleep. So those very same symptoms, you can use homeopathic cafe accruda to get back into more of a balanced state, be able to sleep well, be able to calm your racing mind, be able to you know, calm your racing, your racing body. So how are homeopathic medicines made? I'd just like to go through this really quickly so that you can understand when you pick up, let's say, a tube of arnica <laughs> that is a 6C, what on earth does that mean? So let's take the example of, you know, uh, cafe accruda, right? So you would take one part of that coffee, add 99 parts of, you know, a water or, or a solvent, and you shake it up in a specific way, and that becomes a 1C dilution. C stands for the Roman numeral 100. So it's one to the 100th dilution. To get to the 2C dilution, uh, you would take one part of that 1C dilution, add 99 parts of, of water or solvent, shake it up, and that's a 2C. And you go on and on and on until you get the dilution that you're finally going to use, or the potency, some would, will call it. So with the dilution, the most, oh, and then this, this, solution is mixed around with these basically sugar pellets, these lactose and saccharose pellets, um, which is why children love them. But they're not candy, they are medicine. So once you get to that dilution, you have all of these little, little pellets in here, these little sugar balls that children love. And um, you take your dosage. Now, some parents will wonder, well, is it too much sugar? Well, it's actually for one dose, which would be about five pellets, that's only 0.21 grams of sugar, way less than would be in one sugar cube. So I'm not worried about the amount of sugar. And some parents have asked, what about lactose? My child is lactose intolerant. I'm lactose intolerant. There is such a small load of lactose that even the most lactose intolerant patients don't have any problems. So I'm not concerned about that as well. The most commonly used solutions are going to be maybe a 6C or a 9C or a 30C. The higher the dilution, the number, the more dilute it is, as you can see. Now, there's something called Avogadro's number, and I was never good at physics, but there's something called Avogadro's number, which once you get above a, a, about a 6C dilution, which is 10 to the minus 12, there is no more actual detectable original substance left in that dilution, which is why homeopathic medicines are so safe because you can use these substances at very, very dilute concentrations that won't have any toxic effects. But here in Silicon Valley, I'm in the Bay Area, we have a lot of parents who are wondering, well, isn't it just water? Isn't it just placebo? And I want to show you that it's not. So homeopathy is truly an evidence-based medicine, and there are many, many studies. If you go to pubmed.gov, where some of the most respected journals pub, uh, have their articles readily available to at least read their abstracts, even if you can't get the full article, study after study have shown effectiveness over placebo and sometimes even conventional medicines for a variety of, of conditions. And the ones that I really look at are the pediatric specific conditions like upper respiratory infections or the common cold or influenza, the flu, ear infections, cough, diarrhea, post-surgical healing or you know, trauma, aches and, and sprains and bruises. So we're, I'm just gonna show you really quickly just a few of those studies because I want you to see that there, it really is, there is good evidence that homeopathy works. So this one study looked at a combination homeopathic medicine 
for the common cold. Acute rhinosinusitis is another, uh, it's a fancy medical term for the cold. And so this was a double blind placebo controlled trial, which is, that's the gold standard, double blind placebo controlled. And this looked at a combination homeopathic medicine for the treatment of the common cold. And what they found, what the researchers found was that the homeopathic treatment resulted in freedom from complaints. So they were symptom free in 90.3% of the patients when they received that combination medicine and improvement in another 8.3%. So nearly everyone improved or were symptom free. Whereas in the placebo group, their symptoms either remain unchanged or they became worse in about the same number, about 90%. And there was only one adverse event that occurred in the study and that patient happened to be in the placebo group. <laughs> um, another homeopathic study on cough took a combination homeopathic cough syrup uh, for treating cough that, that arose out of a cold, right? Because many of our children will have, with their cold symptoms, have a cough. And in this group, this was fascinating. So after four and seven days of treatment, the cough was significantly lower and the sputum viscosity. What does that mean? That your mucus was less thick, significantly so, in the homeopathic group. So this was another randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial. That's the kind of studies that scientists and medical doctors want to look at. And the study found that the homeopathic syrup employed in the study was able to effectively reduce cough severity and sputum viscosity, thereby representing a valid remedy for the management of, of acute coughs induced by upper respiratory tract infections. The final study I want to point out is Oslococcinum. Now, we're in the springtime up here in North America, but in some parts of the world, you, you're Australia, New Zealand, down under, you're heading into the winter. And so the flu season is, is going to be upon you. And so Oslococcinum has also been shown, that's the homeopathic flu medicine, and not just for the flu, it's for any influenza-like syndrome, uh, the number of patients with no symptoms who received oscillococcinum was significantly higher in the treatment group uh, from the second day onward than compared with placebo. So wouldn't you like to be symptom-free from the flu within a couple of days or at least by the fourth day, which would be awesome, right? All right. So Apis mellifica and histamine, and this is one last study because I find this fascinating. These are what I would call the homeopathic antihistamines. And I know in my family, me, my daughter, my husband, my son is kind of spared. We are in the midst of really, really high pollen season and, and suffering from allergies. And so Apis mellifica and histaminum are truly the homeopathic antihistamines. So this is more of a lab study, but it's fascinating because they took dilutions, these ultra dilutions, these homeopathic dilutions of histamine and apis mellifica. In fact, they use 10 to the minus 30 or 10 to the minus 33, which is very, very dilute. So you think, well, it's just water. But again, they actually put this, this water solution, right, this diluted apis mellifica and histaminum, and they put these immune cells called basophils that have a lot of histamine in them and explode and release their histamine when they're faced with an allergen. In this case, it was dust mite. And what they found that with every single dilution, when those basophils were surrounded by the homeopathic apis mellifica or homeopathic histaminum, those basophils did not release as much histamine when they were faced with that dust mite allergen. So could you imagine if you were faced with a, you know, a Timothy grass pollen or dust mite, that your immune cells could release less histamine. You'd have fewer allergy symptoms if you were to take homeopathic apis mellifica and histaminum, which is fantastic. All right, so how do we choose the right homeopathic medicine? Because I've said homeopathic medicines are an individualized medicine. We really need to know how your child or you are experiencing your unique symptoms. So we want to then pick the medicine that best fits the description of your child's symptoms. Now, how do we use them as a general guideline? I, this is, I typically use a dilution of a 9C or a 30C, and other homeopathic practitioners will use other dilutions. This is what I use for my experience. So, uh, you know, you want to really go with the guidance of your homeopathic practitioner if, if, you're, if you have one, if you're fortunate enough to have one. And I always tell my patients and my parents to remember that the right medicine, finding the right individualized medicine is more important than the actual dilution. So, you know, if I recommend to a mama to go to Whole Foods and get Apis Malefica at a 15C dilution, and they go and Whole Foods typically carries a six or a 30, typically doesn't matter, 
still going to be effective. Just choose, just get the right medicine. The dosage that I use is typically about three pellets, and this is going to be regardless of age. I get that question a lot. Well, what if they're two? What if they're seven? What if it's a, my teenager? What if it's me as an adult? And so the dosage is going to be the same regardless of whether you're a child or an adult. And that's going to be about three pellets. I'll have kids suck on them. Now, the recommendation you'll often hear, just suck is sublingual under your tongue, at least 15 minutes away from food or drinks. I'm here as a mama and as a pediatrician to tell you most of the kids that I see, my own kids, they don't put it under their tongue. They might start under their tongue, but within a couple of minutes are you know, chomping away <laughs> and it still works. Um, sometimes it can be hard to find a window where my kids haven't eaten something. You know, there's always something that's in their mouth. And so even if it's closer to what they've eaten, that's fine. Uh, it still works. You know, I would say um, I, I would try to keep it further away from pepperminty things like toothpaste, if, if it's minty, or peppermint tea, um, simply because peppermint is going to constrict the blood vessels and you're not going to absorb as much of the medicine from under your tongue as well. And how frequently you give the medicines depends on how severe your symptoms are. So for very acute symptoms, um, you know, more, more severe symptoms, I sometimes will give the medicine, for instance, with Apis mellifica, if my daughter is having, you know, sneezing and eyes and the allergy attack, I'll do three pellets every 15 minutes. But in general, for most kids, I'm giving them every two to three hours, spacing out the interval as they get better. Um, I forgot to mention that for babies. So what about babies? I do use homeopathic medicines for infants. So for babies, um, I will dissolve 10 pellets in a little bit of water and then just give them a teaspoon or with a little eyedropper, put it right into their mouth and, and that will be one dose for them. You can use homeopathic medicines with other medications, with other supplements, um, with other herbs that your child may be on, even essential oils. I do recommend, though, you know, that you do not stop any of your child's routine medications without consulting your practitioner. But I do want to also reassure you that I have many children you know, with asthma who might be on their inhalers or um, you know, with um, with with sinus infections who may already be on antibiotics but not getting the relief that they had hoped for. And you can always layer in homeopathic medicines. You can, uh, you know, I've, I've found too that with homeopathic medicines over time because it does teach the body how to respond more favorably that very, very often we can minimize the use of other pharmaceutical medications. But again, do not stop without your, your doctor's advice. Okay, the blue tube. Um, I've had many, many a parent have trouble opening up a blue tube and pop up the entire top with a, with a knife and <laughs> just take out the pellets manually. So I want to show you how to do it. So this is a little blue tube. Again, this is my Arnica Montana, which every mama, every grandparent, every nanny should have in their backpack or their purse uh, because it's the best for bumps and bruises. So there's a little paper seal that's around the bottom of the tube. You're going to turn the tube upside down. You're going to twist one, two, three to get the desired number of pellets that you want in there. The next thing you do is just gently open up the bottle, pull it off the top, and then you have the pellets inside the top of your cap. And then you can just put the pellets directly right into your child's mouth or into your mouth without touching them. Now, if you touch them, it's not the end of the world, but that's the ideal way to do it. Okay. All right. So let's get right into, I think we're, we're running pretty well on time because now you have some of the fundamentals of why, why choose homeopathy or natural medicines in the first place, you know, that, that there is evidence to this, that it can be really effective and that it can work and that it's safe. But let's go to the common conditions because this is where, you know, having a home remedy kit, a homeopathic home remedy kit is so great to have at home or to travel with. I don't, travel anywhere without, you know, my standard list of homeopathic medicines that I take with me. Uh, so we'll go over flu, fever, colds, coughs, earaches, stomach flu, bumps and bruises, and allergies. This is just a taste of what I teach online and what I teach to my patients because there are many, many, many homeopathic medicines to choose from. Remembering that the best homeopathic medicine, the ideal one to help your child is going to be the one that uh, is individualized to how they're experiencing their symptoms. However, these 
the ones that I'm going to be talking about right now are the most some of the most common ones. So hopefully there'll be a benefit to your children when they're when they're sick next, and hopefully they won't be sick for a long time. <laughs> um, I do have a couple of resources for you that I just wanted to share because I know some of you guys are now about to get into frantic note taking mode, and I don't. I, I would rather that you listen um, and absorb ask some questions, and know that you have some resources that I've just uh, created for, for everyone. Um, the first one is a link to just a, a really easy infographic. I've had parents ask me, well, what medicines should I keep at home? You know, which homeopathic tubes are the priorities if I'm going to start a homeopathic home remedy kit? And these are the ones, I just made a little infographic, literally a PDF that you can download, and these are the medicines we're gonna talk about today because they are some of the most commonly used ones in my practice with my children, in the patients I see, and that, that that, you know, I see um, uh, when I teach online. So this, uh, start your homeopathic home remedy kit, this is what it looks like. Literally, it has like 20 different medicines. I go through just an alphabetical order what their indications are, okay? And we're gonna talk about those. But again, don't feel like you have to frantically take notes. Um, the next for allergies, not all of you guys are in allergy season right now, but I know allergy season in particular because of the heavy rains that we've had, um, you know, in, in North America, it's it is a very, very bad allergy season already. Um, and so I just made a little algorithm for helping you choose which homeopathic medicines might fit. So that's the next link right there. And this is what it looks like. I just want to show you. It's just a little step-by-step. -step. If your child has eye symptoms, nose symptoms, sinus pain, you know, what are the different options that you can choose from? Again, not an exhaustive list, but you know, when we talk about allergies, there may be some other medicines that could be a benefit for your child. So I just want you guys to have those as a resource, okay? All right, so let's begin. Um, the first thing to know is when should you see your doctor? Because with homeopathic medicine, it's so amenable to home care. I love it because it really empowers us as parents to be able to treat our children you know, when they're sick, to minimize doctor's visits, minimize going to the ER, because of course what happens when you go to the doctor's office or the ER, you might come home with another germ, right? And then it's the time and the expense. So I love home care, but you also wanna know when is it time to see your doctor? You know, when is it time to call the doctor's office? So always trust your mama or papa gut, always. If you're just worried about your child, no matter what's going on, just call. I would much rather for my patients that they call me um, and then I can just w work through and talk through and let them know, oh, it's okay, or I need, need you to come in. But trust yourself, you know your child best. And each baby with a fever that's under three months old, very important to call your doctor because fevers can, uh, can be indicative of a more serious infection. If you've had a fever for more than three or four days, absolutely touch base. It could still be viral, but it could be a sign that perhaps um, there's a bacterial infection brewing. Of course, antibiotics don't do a thing for viral infections, but can be very beneficial and sometimes even life-saving for bacterial infections. Um, some other indications of your child's immunocompromised has had a seizure. If they're showing any signs of dehydration, follow their pee. If they're not having any urine in over six to eight hours. That's a, a sign that they are heading towards getting dehydrated. We want you, I want to know about that as, as my child's pediatrician. Any trouble breathing? If they're really sleepy or difficult to arouse, or if they're truly, really irritable and truly inconsolable, or just acting confused and not like themselves, just you know, err on the side of caution and call your doctor. That being said, for the most part, you are going to be able to really, really effectively manage many of your children's symptoms and get them better, faster, um, feeling great. You know, with your home, with when you're armed with a homeopathic toolkit at home. <laughs> so. For the flu or flu-like illness, I've mentioned oscillococcinum. I talked about the oscillococcinum study before that showed that there was significant improvement in patients who were treated with oscillococcinum. It works really well. And I have countless parents and grandparents, and for me personally, where you know I've started to feel, you just know, either you look at your child and they come home and they have that glassy look, no fever yet, but they're just, they're, they're droopy, they're a little pale, and you just know they're gonna get hit with something. Or you yourself, I just traveled back from a conference, and of course on the airplane, when I got to the conference, I mean, that second day I just felt like, oh my goodness, my throat started hurt, I feel bleary-eyed, a little achy, and I was just you know praying that I wasn't gonna get sick, and I dug, dug, dug through my purse, and I found 
my last two of Oslo Cox sign up. <laughs> and sure enough, I took it and I was better the next day. So how do you dose Oslo Cox sign up? These are a little different than the blue tubes. I'm going to show you. So Oslo Cox sign up comes in these little tubes. Hope you can see that um, compared with the bigger blue tubes. And Oslococcinum has smaller pellets. I call them little sprinkles, um, but you can kind of hear the shaking. And so the dosage, again, the same whether you're a child or an adult, is going to be one vial. You just empty the contents of one vial and take one vial three times over a 24 hour period, is how I dose it. Um, and it is best if you start immediately at the onset of symptoms. One thing that is very different from a conventional approach versus a natural approach is that with natural medicines, if you can start at the start your natural medicines at the very onset of symptoms, right when you're getting that glassy eyed look, not feeling very well, you can really nip things in the bud very quickly within a day or two. Very different than conventional medicine where we wait and watch not much to do unless you have symptoms for more than 10 to 14 days, in which case we might consider an antibiotic. Uh, an interesting use of oslococcinum is you can also use it preventatively with good results as well during the, during the quote, flu season, and you know there, whatever your flu season is, but once a week during that season may help to prevent the flu or flu-like illness as well. All right, fever. Fever phobia, that's the number one mistake that parents make. It's the number one mistake that practitioners make. And I want to, I'm here as a pediatrician and a mama to let you know that you should not be afraid of your child's fever. And we're going to, I'm going to talk to you about why not. But fever phobia runs rampant among parents and practitioners. And what's the first thing that, you know, if you've ever gone to urgent care with your child and they've had a fever, even before they look at your child or talk to you about what's going on, the first thing that the nurse might do is give your child some acetaminophen, right? Not looking at the child, just simply looking at the number on the thermometer. So I'm, I want to make sure that you don't panic when your children have fever. So we want to know the facts about fever. Fever is really a, truly our body's natural response to infection, slows the germs down that are making us feel sick, and really increases our immune system's ability, it boosts the ability of some of our immune cells to fight those infections. So fever actually helps your child to get over their illness faster. In a neurologically normal child, fever cannot rise high enough to cause brain damage. So be assured, it's not going to climb up and get out of control. Now, of course, you don't want to overbundle your child when they have a fever, but in a, in a natural environment, when your child is neurologically, does not have a neurologic disorder, fever can't get, quote, too high. The other thing to know is that the height of the fever doesn't necessarily indicate how serious the infection is. I want you to look at your child because some children, my daughter for one, you know, she'll shoot up to 104 but she'll be talking to me, looking at me, and I'll take her temperature and be floored that she's 104 because... I at 104 would feel terrible. Uh, whereas, you know, if she had 100.3 fever and was listless on the couch and moaning and, you know, not wanting to drink, I'd be much more worried about her with that low grade fever. Okay. Uh, so, what are some of the problems with suppressing fever artificially? And with this, I'm talking about artificially suppressing fever. I'm not talking about supporting your body's immune response with homeopathic medicines. Well, one of the problems is that reducing fevers artificially with medications like acetaminophen or ibuprofen have been shown to prolong the duration of your child's illness. So unfortunately, we might help our children feel better temporarily, but we may be keeping them sick for longer periods. Fever reducers also just reduce fever, and that's about it. They don't strengthen your child's immune system. They don't help fight the infection. What they do do, which I actually am not a huge fan of, is they might help our kids to feel better and feel, quote, normal. So then they're running around on the trampoline, acting great, feeling good. But I want those kids to be couch potatoes. I want them to rest. I want them to you know, just lay around and let their bodies rest and recover and focus on healing and not focus on playing. Acetaminophen, which in the States we call Tylenol, in Canada I, I think it's paracetamol in other countries as well, uh, is particularly problematic because it does stress the liver and, and reduce levels of a very, very important antioxidant called glutathione that helps us fight infections and to detoxify when we're sick. So, you know, for 
thinking about suppressing fevers, though, we do have to know that there is a time and a place for everything. I, I will not sit here and say that I've never given my child a fever reducer, but we want to use those fever reducers judiciously. Like when your child is so uncomfortable that they can't sleep because sleep heals, or if they're so uncomfortable that they don't want to drink anything because dehydration will make everything worse. Um, if you do use a fever reducer, I do typically prefer ibuprofen over acetaminophen. But again, make sure that you're checking with your doctor to make sure ibuprofen is appropriate because it's not indicated for, for children under six months of age and for certain, certain patients with certain chronic illnesses. All right, but homeopathy offers so many options to help our children when they have fever, help, help the fever resolve faster. I didn't say suppress it. I said resolve faster because you're teaching your body how, and your immune system how to uh, recover more efficiently, do what it's supposed to do, do what it's trying to do, but just faster and more effectively. Um, and so the top three that I use, and there are many, many more, but, but ferrum phosphoricum has also been called the homeopathic anti-inflammatory. This is a great one for kind of general low to moderate fever, low-grade fever that comes on gradually and doesn't have a lot of other specific symptoms. Uh, Aconitum napellus is a great fever medicine for the fever that comes on suddenly, really high, especially after being exposed to a cold wind. You know, here in the San Francisco Bay Area, I see that quite a bit when our kids go to the beach and our beaches are not that warm <laughs> in San Francisco and they'll come home, it's been windy and cold. And that night they get a fever, 104, and their face is bright red and dry and they're really agitated and very anxious. Belladonna is a great homeopathic medicine for sudden onset of high fever, but unlike Aconitum napellus, their face is going to be red, but also very clammy and sweaty, and their pupils may be dilated, and they may be a little bit delirious, not as anxious and agitated, but more delirious with their fever. So again, the way you dose these, typically I use a dilution of about 9C or 30C, but depending on how severe the, the symptoms are, if they, you know, if they have a high fever and they're really uncomfortable, I might give them three pellets every 15 to 20 20 minutes, but otherwise I'll kind of space it out every two to three hours until they're well. All right, what about colds, upper respiratory tract infections, which happen winter, spring, summer, or fall. I mean, you can get a cold any time of year. Um, so these are some of the most common medicines that I'll use. And again, they're all on that little infographic. So I just want to give you the top ones, knowing that there are many, many more that we can use, but I want you to have the most common ones under your, under your belt so that you can use them you know, when your children are sick. So Allium sepa is the onion that I mentioned way in the beginning. And Allium sepa, what kind of a cold will that be good for? That will be helpful if you or your child have profuse, watery, burning nasal discharge with a lot of sneezing. And your eyes may be watery too, but the eye discharge doesn't really bother you too much. Calibicromicum, on the other hand, it's great for that nasal discharge, you know, that, that snot that's just thick and stringy and goopy and yellow green. You can kind of pull it out like rubber cement. Uh, and it's worse, you know, right around two to four in the morning, but it's that kind of goopy green yellow discharge that characterizes when calibicromicum would be helpful for you. Uh, Nux vomica is a great medicine for a lot of different things, uh, but when it comes to colds, it's really helpful for colds that, uh, for when you wake up in the morning with a lot of sneezing, you have a really clear runny nose during the day, but you're super stuffed up at nighttime, right? And that happens to a lot of us. We're running during the day, and then we have a hard time sleeping because our nose is so stuffy at nighttime. And on top of that, your, your child who might typically be very sweet and, you know, calm and, um, you know, very, you know, uh, very, you know, cooperative, uh, all of a sudden becomes really irritable and grumpy throughout the day and very, very bossy. <laughs> um, pulsatilla is one of my favorite homeopathic medicines for children. Um, but when it comes to colds, it's very helpful for colds that have kind of a creamy yellow, not really irritating nasal discharge. It's just coming out kind of bland. They may have a little bit of eye drainage. Uh, they're, they're runny during the day or out in the open air, but stuffier at night or when they're in a closed kind of warmer room. And the pulsatilla child when it, the, who would benefit from pulsatilla is a child who's really weepy and clingy. You, know, you might have a child who typically is very independent, um, you know, can do things on their own, but when they get sick with this nasal discharge, they just want you to hold them and they want to snuggle with you and they just really want to be with you constantly. 
All right. Let's talk about when we're not sure. So I, you know, I, I am a fan of individualized homeopathic medicines. I think they work typically better than, than general combination medicines. However, sometimes you're not sure. And you know, there are a combination of symptoms that your child has. So there are combination of medicines like cold calm, which is what it's called here in the States. It's called Corazalia in Canada. This is a combination of different homeopathic medicines that can fit just about most of your cold symptoms. Now this will work great if your child has symptoms that match any of these homeopathic medicines. So this is a list of all the different homeopathic medicines that are in cold calm. Corzalia is our, is the ingredients are listed in orange because the formulation is a bit different in America versus in Canada. Um, but you know, if cold calm isn't working, the reason why I say individualized medicines are more beneficial is because some people will take these combinations and say, eh, I tried it, it didn't work. Well, it probably didn't work because your child had symptoms or you had symptoms that were different than any of the medicines that were in this combination. So just make sure, and if you tried it, sometimes they work fantastically well, but if they didn't, look to see, perhaps your child's symptoms are different and there's another individual medicine that would work better, okay? What about for a cough? We saw that study that showed that a homeopathic cough syrup combination syrup could work really, really well. Um, but these medicines are some of my go-tos. Now, Antimonium Tartaricum is great for that really wet, rattly, mucousy cough. The kind of cough when you put your hand on your child's chest, you can feel that rattling in their chest. And your, ch your child may be weak and have a difficult time getting out that mucus. Um, arsenic of album is really good for kind of wheezy, burning coughs. They feel better with drinking really, really warm water, and they tend to be really anxious about, worried that they're really sick. Oftentimes, they'll have an aggravation of their cough in the, in the middle of the night, between 1 and 3 in the morning. Now, some of your kids, whenever they get a cold, they immediately develop a croupy cough with that barky seal-like sound. Uh, and then you're heading into the ER for the breathing treatments and the cool mist. Uh, but spongiatosa is one of the best medicines for that croupy, dry, barking cough. And it is one that, you know, if your child does tend to get a croupy cough, can be really, really beneficial if you start right away to help really prevent or reduce the likelihood of having those croup attacks in the middle of the night, which can be so scary. Um, this is the homeopathic combination syrup. Actually, it's the very same ingredients as the medicine that was studied and found to be so effective. Remember that study? It was found to be effective in reducing the severity of the cough and uh, the sputum viscosity, the thickness of the mucus. So it's called Chestol honey here in the States. It's called Stodol in Canada. Um, it does have honey in it, so it's not indicated for children under one year of age. But again, this can be very helpful, especially if your child has symptoms that match the symptoms associated with the, the medicines, the particular homeopathic medicines that are in this combination. All right. Um, ear aches. All right, ear aches are the number one reason for a visit to the pediatrician's office. And I, I have an article on what to do. My pediatrician approved natural remedies, not just homeopathic medicines, but other things to use like garlic eardrops for ear aches. But when it comes to homeopathic medicines, so effective, so amazing for ear infection. Uh, I've significantly been able to reduce dramatically the number of times where my patients have needed antibiotics for their ear infections. So ferrum phosphoricum is the number one medicine for ear aches because it helps with draining of the eustachian tube, draining the fluid that's trapped behind your child's eardrum and causing that pain. <clears throat> Belladonna is helpful when your child's ear pain is throbbing and they have a high fever. And when you look at their eardrum or if your doctor looks in the eardrum, they'll see a bright red eardrum um, and your child is feeling really, really restless and, and, and in pain. Uh, pulsatilla, you know, the pain is there, but it's not as severe as with belladonna. And if, you're, if your pediatrician or your doctor were to look behind the eardrum, or many of my parents have be become very well-versed in looking into their child's own eardrums with those home otoscopes that you can get online. And what you'll find is that these children have that thick yellow nasal discharge, and you see the same discharge behind the eardrum. And again, these children are kind of weepy and just want to be held. Um, Hepar sulfurous is more for uh, swimmer's ear. Uh, here in America, we're heading into the summer. It's not that warm right now, but over the summertime, we see a lot of kids with swimmer's ear, or maybe you have, a, you know, taking swim classes throughout the year. But this is really good for really painful ears, painful to the slightest touch. You look inside, and there's a little discharge in the ear as well. 
Okay, so I know we're kind of going through, but we're on the home stretch. I want to just, uh, you know, have, have you have maybe 15 medicines under your belt so that you can use when you're at home, right? And teach your family members how to use when your kids are sick. Uh, what about stomach flu, vomiting and diarrhea, which I have to say is one of the worst things that you can go through with your child. I'll take a coughing snotty kid any day over a vomiting kid. Um, but our Senecum album, we mentioned for that kind of wheezy cup, it is great for vomiting and diarrhea when you have burning tummy aches, they want a really hot pack on their belly, um, or really good for food poisoning. I travel Whenever we travel overseas, or you know, really frankly anywhere, I'll carry our Senecum album with me. Um, and if your child is having really, really watery, profuse diarrhea with lots of abdominal gurgling and cramping before their diarrhea poop, then podophyllum is another great medicine. Okay. Um, I mentioned Arnica is something that all parents should have, all you know, daycare providers, nannies, babysitters should have in their pocketbooks, grandparents, um, because Arnica is the go-to homeopathic medicine as a pellet for any bump, bruise, you know, sore, sore back, um, fall off the monkey bars and bonk your elbow, any overuse injury. Um, the pellets are amazing. You can also use Arnica cream for bumps, bruises, and sprains, but you don't want to use Arnica cream on open skin because it can irritate the skin a bit. Um, if, you, if your child has a cut or a scrape, something that you might consider putting a little Neosporin or topical antibiotic on, by all means, please try calendula. Calendula is made from marigold, but calendula actually has skin healing properties. It's going to help the skin heal faster, and it also has antimicrobial properties, so it can help prevent infections as well. All right, allergies. Um, we are, as I mentioned, in the middle of terrible, terrible allergy season. Um, I, I have a two, it's been so bad, I have a two-part article on allergies to really help you manage your allergy bucket. I know not all of you listening are going to have allergies, but I've been getting calls and, and messages online about, you know, what can I do for allergies? So there's um, how to lower your allergy bucket and really what can we do naturally to reduce those allergies because my child has not been on Claritin or Zyrtec or it's not working anymore. Um, or I'd like to try something natural so that next allergy season isn't as bad. Uh, and I also did um, a master class on just this because this seems to be a really pressing issue right now for, for many of you um, and, and for many of my patients who are coming in and calling about this. Um, okay, so let's talk about the, the homeopathic medicines for allergies. And remember, I have a, a little kind of cheat sheet to help you go through this if you'd like, if you need it. Um, but Apis Malefica, remember I mentioned Apis Malefica, the homeopathic antihistamine. It is really the best to help stabilize a histamine release. So anything that's histamine related, whether they're hives or allergy seasons, um, but, you know, especially helpful if your child has a swollen, itchy red eyelid and they're just constantly, constantly rubbing. Allium sepa we saw could be good for colds, but also good for allergies when your child has symptoms or you. I always say child because I'm a pediatrician, but these of course are good for adults and children. Um, but when the symptoms include lots and lots of sneezing, watery runny nose, it's burning. Um, Sabadilla is the one I use for myself, you know, symptomatically because um, when I have allergies, I sneeze a lot, but, but what's really, really dramatic is the itchy nose. My ears get super itchy and I just want to stick my fingers and, and scratch them all the time. And the top of my, the roof of my mouth gets incredibly itchy and you're trying to basically scratch it with your tongue. <laughs> so if you've had those symptoms, Sabadilla is your medicine. Um, euphrasia is for the eye symptoms, and this is my daughter's medicine because when she gets allergies, she'll get the burning, itchy, red, watery eyes, and they're just burning and terrible no matter how many cold compresses we put on her. So euphrasia is for the eye allergies that many, many people will get. Um, and when in doubt, there is a combination. It used to be called Sabadil, but this combination is called Rhine Allergy. I have so many families who love this. I actually stick this in my daughter's um, backpack at school so that she can just take, take it when she needs it, um, especially after coming in from recess when they're playing on the grassy field. And why does this one work so well for her? Well, it has histaminum, which is your homeopathic antihistamine, but her main symptoms, remember I just said, are euphrasia, right, with the eye symptoms. And then sometimes she'll get a really itchy throat or itchy ear. So Sabadilla also is helpful for her. So these medicines are in this Rhine allergy combination. Now, if she had other symptoms, if hers was more, if she had more of an allergic cough, this one might not be as helpful. So you want to make sure that, that even if you're choosing this, that the symptoms help 
with, uh, with what your child, the medicines help with the symptoms that your child is experiencing. Okay, so um, this is that link for the little cheat sheet, you know, if that, if that serves you, if that helps you as a resource. And okay, so there we have, we whizzed through, and I really want to make sure that you guys know that you're here today to really learn more about homeopathy, and it, it is so possible to feel like you can take charge of your child's health, health with homeopathic medicines. You can go from feeling kind of confused, Fingers crossed that you're doing the right thing for your child when they're sick to really feeling so confident that you know which medicines to choose. You're not afraid of their illnesses because you have the tools to help help them feel better. But not only that, you have the tools to help them get better faster. So I'm so glad that you're here today. I'm really glad that you're, you're um, here with For Homeopathy Canada. I want to make sure that you guys all know that this is just the first in For Homeopathy Canada's webinar series. There are so many more to come, and I can't wait to hear all of them, you know, we all have our own experiences and, you know, different things that we teach. And so the next one is going to be on June 18th. Um, Robin, is it going to be the same time? I don't see a time listed, but June 18th. So make sure that you stay tuned for you know, a newsletter and announcement for Homeopathy Canada. I know for Homeopathy Canada, they have a Facebook page and also an Instagram account. So that's, you know, that's where I like to get some of my kind of immediate news online because my email box tends to get flooded. Um, but if you're, if you're signed up for this webinar, you should get notified of the next webinars to come. And this is going to be with Nicole Dwelly on Homeopathy at Home right? Because, you know, homeopathy is so perfectly suited to uh, home care and care for our whole family. And so she's going to be talking about how to build your natural first aid kit. So I can't wait to learn a lot because especially as we're heading into the summer, this is June 18th, many of your kids will be out of school or almost out of school and you'll be traveling over the summer. Um, so you're going to want to make sure you have your home homeopathic travel remedy kit with you. Um, all right, so I'd love for you guys to stay in touch. Again, I have my, my online holistic pediatric resource, healthykidshappykids.com. I see a lot of you guys on the chat group and the participant list that are part of our Thriving Child Facebook group, which I love. And I don't know if For Homeopathy Canada has a Facebook group, but I'd love to see that happen, right, where mamas and papas can really um, learn from each other um, and learn how to use homeopathic medicines. Um, I love our community, our Thriving Child community, because we, we are such a safe community of like-minded, holistic parents, grandparents, and practitioners who really want to support our collective journey into living a holistic, um, natural life for our kids. So um, thanks for joining me. I'd love to take questions. I know Robin's been moderating. I see some of these things, texts going through. I don't know if there are a lot of questions um, going, but I'm, I'm happy to take questions. <clears throat> um, and I just wanted to put the resources up for you because I know that um, we went through a lot. I wanted to make sure you have, guys have practical, actionable things to take home with you. I know for me as a mama, sometimes I'm listening with one ear, I'm deciding what to make for dinner with the other ear, and then I'm you know, working with my hands. <laughs> right? So you're multitasking. So if I have things that are written down for me, it's very helpful. So these are for you, and um, I will take any questions. I don't know, Robin, were there any questions that came up? Oh, there might be a few. Okay. <laughs> First of all, I just want to thank you for just such an outstanding webinar. I don't think we could have picked anyone better to do our uh, inaugural webinar for, for Homeopathy Canada. Oh, thank, thank you. you. I, I love teaching, and especially because I know a lot of these are mamas and papas who just need that information. So. <laughs> All right. So, you know, guys, we're running late. It's already almost one o'clock. So we'll just do a few questions. All of the questions that have to do with personal problems at home and with when would you use this? When would you use that? Unfortunately, beyond the scope of this webinar, but I've written them all down. So maybe we can address them in future webinars. But I will ask you a few general questions, uh, Alyssa. And sure. what a, a great one from Heather. Can you overdose on this stuff? What if a child accidentally ate the whole bottle? That is such a great question. And you could have the entire bottle and nothing would happen adversely. Okay, so I want to reassure you because, again, a lot of kids, they just love it so much and it tastes so sweet, but it is not a concern. Remember how the homeopathic medicines are made. And because they're so dilute, they do have great healing power, but they're so dilute that you're not going to have any of the original compounds, even toxic compounds from that original substance left in the homeopathic medicine. So you don't, you do 
not have to worry at all if your child or your dog, you know, gets into the homeopathic, you know, tubes and downs all of them all at once. So not a worry. The other thing that I get asked too is what if, what if my child take, what if I give them the wrong medicine? Doesn't matter. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Don't be afraid. I'd say just go ahead and try, do your best, educate yourself. And the first step is starting and trying homeopathic medicine. And when you start, you'll see those successes and you build more confidence. But if you choose the quote wrong medicine, it just won't do anything, right? It'll, it, it's not gonna cause any adverse effects. You just won't see much positive. So then you know, typically after two or three doses in an acute situation when your child is sick, if you're not seeing any movement in the right direction, then I go back to the books and I kind of take stock of what my child's symptoms are and see, do I need to pick a different homeopathic medicine? Fabulous. Thank you so much. Um, here's a difficult one because it's, you know, it's such a big, there's a big answer to it. But if you could give a few guidelines to people on, uh, first of all, what dosage to use, whether it's a 9C or a 12C or a 30C, and also, you know, really quickly, when to know when to redose, especially in an acute situation, because it is its own unique set of dosing. Yes, and so um, another great question, um, really when you're dosing for acute situations, because you can also use homeopathic medicines for chronic conditions um, to really help balance uh, balance your overall state of well-being, which is a very different different way of prescribing, and that really should needs to be individualized in working with a homeopathic practitioner. But you know, in acute care situations, for the most part, my general rule of thumb is you. It, it's most people make the mistake of not dosing frequently enough. Um, now. Typically, I'll give a dose and then maybe wait an hour or two and see how things are going. And if things are really moving in the right direction, you don't necessarily need an, any further doses. You know, if they're a little bit better and you want to try to give some more, then you can give another dose. Because it's hard for me to be with you at home, I mean, impossible, right, to know how your child is progressing, I'll typically say maybe three pellets every two to three hours, but watch if they're getting significantly better and really moving towards being well and, and towards that, that um, healing, then, then you can space at the interval to maybe every four or five hours or three times a day, and then you stop. Um, so there's not, unfortunately, there's not a clear, you take the antibiotics three times a day for 10 days. With homeopathy, again, it really comes down to watching your child and looking at your child and seeing you know, how they're doing, dosing frequently if they're having more significant or severe symptoms and spacing out the interval as they improve. Um, oh, as far as the dilution goes, because that was another question, whether you use a 6 year, 9 year, 30 C, 200 C. You know, um, as I mentioned before, what matters most is that you have the right medicine, the right name on the tube. So don't get totally hung up if you don't, the, there's not the dilution, the number um, that you might have heard me say or another practitioner say. Um, you know, this is also getting into the realm of more chronic conditions, but I typically use from my experience, higher numbers when I'm really trying to get more at emotional or behavioral symptoms and lower numbers um, if I'm getting more at the physical symptoms. That's a very simplistic explanation. But again, for most acute conditions, I'll typically use a 9 or a 30C. So hopefully that helps. Um, and every practitioner has a different way they use dilutions as well. Okay, great. I'm still, I'm typing the answers as you're talking. <laughs> Let's just do two quick ones and then we'll call it a day. Um, someone asked about using oscillococcinum preventively. What is your experience with that? You know, I think that it could, it could be very helpful. Um, you know, for, uh, I know, I have not seen any studies on this. So this is where, you know, I really, as much as possible, I like to look at the evidence. But unfortunately, you know, there's, there's not going to be a lot of incentive for um, companies to pay for it. Uh, pay for the homeopathy research, for the government to pay for homeopathy research. Um, but we do have some good evidence on oscillococcin working for acute flu. Just from experience, I know if we use oscillococcin once a week, I, I always take a dose, give my 
children, give my husband one vial of oxalcoxone before we fly on an airplane, <laughs> you know, just to kind of give my immune system a little bit more of that immune kind of boosting memory. Um, so in clinical experience, for my clinical experience, which actually is a part of evidence-based medicine because the evidence should take into account not just what's in, you know, the published research, but also what clinical experience brings. Um, I do find that taking oxalcoxone once a week during that flu season can be helpful in, um, in really reducing the likelihood of catching the flu. Okay, great. So one last one, and I, I don't want to catch you off guard. I have an answer if you don't, but it's a good question because there are books out there. There are good references for, you know, yeah. acute care at home. Is there anyone that you particularly like? So, uh, you know, there's two books that I, I really like. Actually, there's a few few books that I really like. Um, I, the, and they're old books, <laughs> but you know, this medicine is timeless, right? We just learned more about how effective they are. But um, I mean, homeopathy goes uh, you know, centuries back. And so uh, one of my favorite books is by Maisamund Panos, P is in Peter, A-N-O-S. That's uh, it's homeopathic medicine at home, I believe it's called. Um, is that what it's called? I can see it's a yellow book and um, it's, I believe it's homeopathic medicine at home. But anyway, Maisimund, M-A-E-S-I-M-U-N-D, last name Panos, P as in Peter, A-N-O-S. Uh, and then there's also, um, maybe I'm confusing the names, but there's another book by Dana Ullman, U-L-L-M-A-N, uh, and I believe that one actually is called Homeopathic Medicine at Home. Or, or some variation of that. That's another really good resource. Uh, you know, I like resources that are really practical and easy to use and broken down by conditions so that you're not just looking at a whole long list of homeopathic medicines, but you're looking at, you know, colds or coughs or, you know, night terrors or teething, and you can find different, different homeopathic medicines that fit and, and choose specific ones. So those two books. And then another book that I really, really like that's not specific to homeopathy, but incorporates homeopathy and other natural medicines is by um, Robert Roundtree, R-O-U-N-T-R-E-E, -E, so Roundtree, and Janet Zand, Z-A-N-D. And that's called, <laughs> oh my goodness, what's it called? It's called... Um, I believe it's called your your child A to Z. Um, I'm gonna have to look that up. Uh, homey, not homeopathic medicine. Smart medicine for a healthier child. That's what it's called. Smart medicine for a healthier child A to Z. <laughs> so th I mean, those are the three that that I love that I have. You know, at home. I mean, they're they're totally kind of threadbare. I just I haven't picked them up in a little while, so I can't remember the exact titles, but I can tell you exactly what's in them, and those are really good resources. I'd love to hear, Robin, what your resources are for, for, home, for a parent who's really looking to build their uh, homeopathic knowledge for home. All right. So <laughs> I, I, I've run back to my bookshelf. So in the meantime, <laughs> I've, I've looked up the one that you mentioned. First of all, I'm, I have to say, uh, just to not confuse our Canadian audience, it's going to be A to Z here in Canada, but I think people can figure out the A to Z. I'm just joking with you. So uh, you were right. It is called Homeopathic Medicine at Home, Natural Remedies for Everyday Illness and Minor Injuries by Panos, P-A-N-O-S, and it's currently on Amazon.ca for $17.20. How funny. So I'm actually going to show these because, as Robin, as you reached back, I'm like, oh, let me reach back and see if I have these behind me. <laughs> And I do. <laughs> okay, this is the one um, by uh, Dr. Panos, homeopathic medicine at home. <laughs> and then this one is Dana Ullman, who actually is, you know, right in the Bay Area with me. So homeopathic medicine for children. I want to get the glare off. Homeopathic medicine for children and adults. And then this one is by Dr. Roundtree and Janet Zan. This is the smart medicine for healthier children. A to Z if you're in Canada. <laughs> and I've got another Ullman. I think they're related. Robert Ullman and Judith Reichenberg Ullman. Oh, yeah. And they're up, up in Washington. They're wonderful, too. And they've got a book, a green one, called Homeopathic Self-Care. Um, a lot of these books are in multiple editions, so try to get the most recent one that you can get. And I also have a nice one from Thomas Krusel, K-R-U-Z-E-L. Thomas Krusel called the Homeopathic Emergency Guide. So I think we've given you five amazing books. I think from all of those, you're going to do really, really well. <laughs> 
So I think it's time to wrap up. Sorry if we can get, couldn't get to all your questions, but I have written down all of your suggestions for future webinars. Again, we want to thank so profusely Dr. Elisa Song for helping to inaugurate our webinar series. And I would like to invite everybody over to the For Homeopathy Canada website, for homeopathycanada.org. The four is a number. Um, you can sign up there, sign up for more webinars, uh, click on the Homeopathy Works For Me button and uh, listen to other people's testimonials. Provide your own testimonials. We want to hear from you. Sign up for future webinars and for study groups. Uh, we want to create a whole community. Uh, we all love this crazy little thing called homeopathy that the, is the, the little engine that could, despite 200 years of perhaps sometimes not the best uh, PR, has survived, and it survived for a very good reason, and that is because it works. Uh, we commend you for using homeopathy, for being interested in it, and we look forward to seeing you the next time we have our webinar. So for now, I'm Robin Pollock from Toronto, Canada, and uh, goodbye for today. Thank you, Dr. Song. Bye. Thank you so much for having me. This was amazing. I look forward to all the future webinars. Bye, everybody.